Hey guys, hi. So we're talking about Mystery Babylon and um, God is revealing because he says that he will remember M Mystery Babylon and all of their sins. Not just a little because the cup of their fornication with all of the um, other ways. And their Holy Bible actually, if you look at the uh, Masonic Bible, has Egyptian um, altars, bell altars. It has all sorts of abominable things in it. It's not holy. They shouldn't even say holy Bible there. It, their Bible is full of wickedness and evil. Um, I would just turn away from it because they are the destroyers. Um, anyway, so God says, judge not according to the appearance, which these people judge according to the appearance, right? All of them. But judge righteous judgment. All right, righteous judgment. So if any man thirsts, which these people are thirsty, let me tell you, but they don't want your living waters. I've approached many of them, but God is speaking the truth to them, many of them, that once they hear the truth, like when Jesus spoke the truth, people would tear their clothes. They can't stand the truth. They wanted to stone him, and they even murdered him for the word of truth. Um, because they don't like to see who they are. They don't want to see who they are. They don't want to see that they are revelations, wicked people, um, and, and that God is remembering their sins. They don't want that. They don't want to know that. They don't want to know that they're vipers and serpents. Many of them at the upper level know they are. A lot of these younger people, I think they have been deceived and think that they are they are Jews, really. They have told me, we are Jews, and they are the ones Jesus told me by his spirit. They're the ones that do lie. But he gave me the name Agape, okay, because in there, there might be one, one lost sheep, one lost person that who he knows is going to believe on the gospel. And be saved out of this darkness, out of this deep darkness. They were swallowed by the serpent, swallowed by the dragon. And God showed me the whole world is full of darkness. And, and men, gross darkness. That's whenever you're swallowed by this dragon. The dragon is the Vatican. They have swallowed them with darkness. The serpent, complete darkness. But all of us, even us, we, are, we carry the shadow of, of death. So we too have become darkness, but their deeds, their deeds, they lie and deceive, extortion, just wickedness. Their deeds show who they are. That's how you know them. So he, he, uh, he says, if any man thirst, let him come unto me. Now this is for the people that might be saved. Come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Now, when I speak, a lot of times I'm just talking because I've had the, the I've always believed since I was really young. For 45 years, I've been reading the Bible. It's in my heart. So sometimes it just comes up out of my belly and things are said and it, and it pulls people out of the fire. Some people, I just speak the, the, um, lo the truth and they believe it. I could see that they believe it, but sometimes the Holy Spirit just flows in this way and that's the best way that you can do it the way jesus did he says go without a script <laughs> that's the best way to go to hearken into the voice of the lord and um some people did in the old testament you guys just so you know and elijah was taken up with a whirlwind um and enoch was taken um he he walked with god and then he was no more um and so I do believe that the grace of God has always been spoke of, who he is, that he's mercy and truth. Um, and so we need to always know that the, the, Jesus is the king of the Jews. The blood wasn't spilt and he wasn't resurrected for us to receive the Holy Spirit yet um, in our bodies. But the, the words can fall on them and, and, and the... Um, in a way, like the Moses spoke with the Holy Spirit, many of them spoke with the Holy Spirit. But to be saved for the remission of your sins, the blood needed to be shed, the covenant needed to be shed. They had temporal um, shedding of blood and temporal things and washings and things like that. But none of it really 
really was for the remission of the sins of the world. And you couldn't get the new DNA, the new flesh that, that is Christ until he died. But that promise, the promises were given to Israel. And so whenever you become a part of that branch, which I, I showed by faith in Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection, um, you become partakers of and heirs of God's promises and a child and adopted children of God. So these people are not, they are, we are to judge righteous judgment. We're judging righteous judgment using the word of God. So the word is judging them, not us, not our own selves. I'm not going down there and going, you did this, blah, blah, blah. No, we're saying you've done this because this is what the word of God says. You are this because this is what the word of God says. But we use the scriptures as a schoolmaster righteously to show who they are so that we can point them to Christ. Christ died for your sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried. Believe this, and you'll be saved. This other way that you want to do with opening your third eye is not going to save you. This, this light there in your pinnacle is not going to save you. It's the secret chamber Jesus warned us about. It says in the word of God about this secret chamber. Do not go. When they say, I'm in the secret chamber, believe it not. Um, it's the light that leads to darkness. Now these kids, they think they've got a light. They think they've got the light. But God in his love is speaking to them love. Greek for God's love for the world, his creation for all mankind, because he's their creator. They think they're self-created and that they can open this Christ consciousness and that the whole world is going to be Christ consciousness. No. No. The body of Christ is in Christ's body by faith on Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, and that he came and was came in the flesh. These people don't believe he came in the flesh 2,000 years ago and spilled his blood. Their blood record is going to testify against them, unfortunately. And the sad thing about it is um, they, they look at the Pope and think he's holy, but he dies because the wages of sin is death. So they're all committing sin. We all die, so we all have committed sin. Our blood records are all tainted with sin but the, because the wages of sin is death. But Jesus Christ paid our penalty, who, all who believe he's our propitiation, you know, He's our mediator between God and man. He's the one that makes peace between us and God. He made peace. He said, God, forgive them for they know not what they do. And I've prayed for these people if they could be saved. Because I do know the word cannot be broken and that some of them are not. Some of them are cast into the plagues. Some of them are cast into the second death of the lake of fire eternally. Um, so... What was I looking for? Oh, the fruit. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. So when someone gets saved, hallelujah, praise Jesus. When someone gets saved, they become a part of Jesus' body, a saved person. And I was out on the streets, and this one man, who is a homeless man that I know that you know, I try to help out whenever I can. Now, we know Jesus is no longer on the cross. He is resurrected from the grave. He defeated death. He's the first fruit from the dead. Praise God for that. Um, he's no longer on the cross. Let's see. I'm going to go like that. Believers. Um, he's, he's not on the cross anymore. Um, so... <laughs> This is so exciting. So I'm out there giving out my little tracks, excited about Jesus Christ. And this homeless man comes up, and I could tell he was speaking. It was God. It was not him. I could tell he was speaking. It was so exciting. Hi, Jacob. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my kids are all coming home, so you can hear the doors opening and closing. Um, so this homeless man comes up to me, and he says scripture to me and I recognize the scripture I'm like I know that scripture it was really exciting and it it encouraged me and he gave me he gave me flowers um he gave me a bouquet of red roses and he I found the scripture um the scripture that he was speaking to me and it was about bearing fruit you guys and that your fruit would remain 
and I was so excited. It really just encouraged me, and I wanted to share it with you guys. If I could find it, <laughs> the scripture, um, it's about your fruit will remain, and it's in, I think, John or 1 John. Maybe it's John. Oh, it's John. Oh, yes, yes. Here we go. Here we go. You guys ready for this? Sorry about my bouncing around. Um, just listen and look away if I'm bouncing too much for your eyes. I'm sorry. So he says, um, he said, start speaking to me. And I, and I knew instantly he was speaking the word of God. And I knew the scriptures. And then I came home. I'm like, I got to find where those were. And so he says to me, he says, greater hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends. He does it really happy like too. It's so cute. If ye do whatsoever I command you, henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, called, chosen, and faithful. And he says, And ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, that's fruit from the dead, guys. And that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. He didn't say that last part, but he said the part he ended at, your fruit shall remain. He goes, you are a woman of God and your fruit will remain. And I was so excited and just encouraged. And I knew it was an encouragement from God. And I just went, wow, this is so exciting. And... um so my main, the, the ministry of reconciliation is what God has given me. Um, and it's not mine, it's his. And the, the judgment, the righteous judgment, discernment of the word of God, dividing the word of God of who people are, is from him also. So all praise and glory are his. The spirit is winning the war, you guys. The Holy Spirit, his words are winning the war. Okay, because we're hearkening to his voice, not the voice of the serpent. We're not going to listen to the serpent or Lucifer, Sarians, or any of them. We're going to, we follow the good shepherd. And because we're with him, we're bearing much fruit because we're bringing the good news of, of the gospel of truth that Christ died for us and that he's alive and he is the resurrection and the life and that when he comes and we see him, we will be like him. And when we, when we look upon him, we'll see him face to face at one, one day. And we will have our heavenly bodies. Right now we're like him and we know that we're like him because we're bearing much fruit. Fruit from the dead. People from the bitter waters. The waters have become bitter. We are 70% water. And until we have the living waters, the cup that Jesus offered. He said, drink my cup and you'll have everlasting life. Um, we listen to his voice. So I just, that was really encouraging. And, and the flowers were beautiful. Um, and I just want to encourage everyone that I know, know the time is close because we're not in the darkness, we're in the light. So our redemption draweth nigh. 